Oh my god, it's just freezing in my house. As I am filming this, it is January 1st, which means I am filming my last monthly wrap-up of the year. Which, if you forgot how the months go, that would mean this is my December wrap-up. Because <laughs> December is the last month of the year! I read seven books this month to cap off my year with a round total of 84 books read total for the year. Oh yeah. I set my goal for like 52 or something, so I blew that out of the water. But it doesn't really matter. Who cares how many books you read in a year, right? As long as you're happy. As long as you're happy with the goals that you set for yourself, then it doesn't matter how many books you read. So I'm gonna get off my soapbox. I'm not actually standing on something that was really stupid. The first book I read in the month of December was As Chimney Sweepers Come to Dust by Alan Bradley. And this one was sent to me by my friend Melanie in our little book swap that we do. She's actually loaned me this entire series. This is a mystery series and this is like the seventh book in it? I don't remember. It's all following this character, uh, Flavia de Luce. De Luce? Flavia, I don't know, I've never heard it pronounced, uh, but I'm going to spell it here so you can see how it's spelled. It's a really fun series. Uh, the main character is a young girl. I think she is like 11 or something in the first book and now she's around 12. She's very precocious. It's a very Nancy Drew type situation. You know, she goes off and solves mysteries and you have to, you definitely have to have a suspension of disbelief because a lot of murders happen around her. I always love this about like long mystery series. How does the author justify all these murders happening around this person who is not a paid detective. There's really no explanation as to why sh there are so many murders happening around this character, but she finds them, she finds these murders, and she solves the mysteries. This one I didn't like as much as the other ones in the series because this one sort of takes a, a turn and the author is expanding the world of the series. And I won't give too many details because this is like the seventh book in a mystery series. I really wasn't on board exactly with this uh, world expansion because the main mystery of the book sort of took a sideline. That was more of the B plot to the A plot of the expanding world. And this is a very transitional book, I feel like, in the series, and I don't always like transitional books, so I gave this three out of five stars. But I still love the character, love the series, and I will definitely continue on. I think there's already two more out that I still have yet to read. The second book I read in December was The Little Book of Hygge, Secrets to da or Danish Secrets to Happy Living <laughs> by Mike Wiking. This was given to me by my friend Maggie. She sent me a care package with little hygge things in it, and I did a whole video on this book, reviewing the book, and also talking about Huga in general that I will link, so I won't talk about this very much here, but I gave this four out of five stars. It was a delightful little read. It's great to dip in and out of, read just a little section at a time. Great for winter, cozying up and reading this book, and it has the cutest little illustrations in it. I loved it. It was great. I gave it four out of five stars just because I, you know, have to give it a rating. I don't have to give books ratings, but I do. So, four out of five stars. The third book I read in December was an audiobook, and that was Labor of Love, The Invention of Dating by Moira Weigel. <laughs> this was a great, soft, academic book. Like, it was nonfiction, but it wasn't like a textbook. But it looked at the history of dating from a sociological point of view. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. It was not an extensive look at the history of dating, but it actually went more in depth than I expected it to. A lot of books like this focus on heteronormative, white, middle-class relationships. And while it did focus heavily on that, it also took the time to explain relationships uh, in the LGBTQ plus community, uh, people of color, people of lower and upper classes. So it really looked at the breakdown between class, race, gender, orientation, and how that structures how you date and have relationships with other people. I also really loved how it looked at how the economy and societal norms influence our dating and love and marriage habits. And I think that's something that people often forget. They think that there is one way to date and have relationships uh, and that is the way that it is supposed to be because of humans and biology and it's just written in our DNA, but it's really not. Economics and societal norms have a 
huge influence on how our relationships are structured and I think that people overlook that all the time and there is no one way to have a relationship with other people especially since cultures are so different your economic standing is so different like somebody from the middle class is not going to approach marriage in the same way as someone from a lower or poorer class it's just there are different factors involved. And I really liked how that book explored it. It did not prescribe a way to date or to marry or that marriage was even necessary. And I really appreciated that from a book that looked at the history of dating. So if that topic interests you at all, I would definitely suggest this book. The fourth and fifth books that I read in December, I am counting. I know other people would probably not count these books, but they were whole books and I read them in December, so I'm counting them. And they were both children's books. <laughs> I bought them to give to my little baby cousins for Christmas and I, I had to read them before I gave them away to make sure that they were good. And those were The Princess and the Pony by Kate Beaton and Not Quite Narwhal by Jesse Seema. And these were just so adorable. I love children's books so much. I think that you can never grow out of children's books. Like who doesn't love a picture book? They're so cute and lovely and wonderful and they have good lessons and adults should read more picture books. So The Princess and the Pony is by one of my favorite graphic artists, Kate Beaton, and she also wrote Hark a Vagrant, which I have here. I have two of her other books here, Hark a Vagrant and Step Aside Pops. So The Princess and the Pony is a great children's offering from Kate Beaton and I just loved it. The story was great. The pony illustration makes my life. I kind of want to get it tattooed on myself somewhere. I won't but I kind of want to. <laughs> I gave it to my little cousin and she can't read yet or really understand things but I think when she does, when she grows old enough, I think that she'll really like the princess on the pony. And Not Quite Narwhal is about a unicorn that lives under the sea and thinks that it's a narwhal but realizes that he's not quite like the other narwhals because he can't swim very well and he goes on a quest to find out who he really is and I just loved it and it was amazing and I think everybody should read it. <laughs> So I gave both of those books five out of five stars because they're awesome and amazing and they take like 10 minutes to read and you should go out and read them right now. It'll take you 10 minutes once you find them. The sixth book that I read I also listened to on audiobook and this was You Can't Touch My Hair and Other Things I Still Have to Explain by Phoebe Robinson. 2017 was the year of feminist memoirs for me and this one was great. She made so many great points. Her humor is spot on but I gave it four out of five stars. I knocked it down one star because she goes on so many tangents in her writing. She sets up a scenario to make a point, but then she goes on this tangent that has nothing to do with the point that she is making, that by the time you get to the point that she is making, you forget what it was in the first place. <laughs> other than that, wonderful book. Uh, I really like the audiobook because the author reads it herself and other than like full cast recordings, when the authors read the books are my favorite kinds of audiobooks, so I really liked that. Uh, but again, just too many tangents. Just too many tangents. Other than that, it was great, and I really suggest it. The seventh book I read, and the last and final book that I read in the month of December and the year 2017, is The Return of the King by J.R.R.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> and I'm actually not finished with it yet. Oops. Finishing this series of books. This trilogy originally was supposed to be published as one book but published as three so whatever. What was I saying? Oh anyway one of my only goals for this year was to finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy and I kind of failed because it's January 1st as I am filming this right now and I have not finished it. But I have less than 40 pages to go and I am gonna finish it today so I'm counting it as 2017. I'm counting it as being read in 2017 because there is no one here to stop me. <laughs> Come at me. I am sole book dictator of my library and henceforth I shall claim it that I read in 2017 and thus it shall be. The main conflict is already over. The ring has been disposed of, the evil has been vanquished, and now Tolkien is just going on for another five chapters about 
whatever. And that leads me to one of the big problems I have with The Lord of the Rings is that Tolkien has a pacing problem. And I know it. this is an epic. It's an epic. And so I can accept it that, you know, you'll have action, 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 and then he'll take like pages and pages to tell you about the whole lineage of these kings and every gosh darn one of them and what their names was and what they were known for. Uh, so I can accept it, but it doesn't mean that I didn't slog my way through those boring parts. <laughs> for example, right now, um, I'm at a part where, you know, it's just, we just had like, the, the big climax of the whole story just happened and now we're just dawdling back across the country and you get paragraphs like this. Now the guests were ready and they drank the stirrup cup and with great praise and friendship they departed and came at length to Helm's Deep and there they rested two days. Then Legolas repaid his promise to Gimli and went with him to the glittering caves and then they returned he was silent and all I could say was Gimli alone could find words fit to speak of them. And never before has a dwarf claimed victory over an elf in a contest of words, said he. Now therefore, let us go to Fanghorn and set the score right. From deep and calm, they rode to Isengard and saw how the ends had busied themselves. When stone circle had been thrown down and removed from the land within, and made a garden filled with orchards and trees, and a stream ran through it. And in the midst of all, there was a lake of clear water, and out of the tower, Orthang rose still, tall and impregnable, and the black rock was mirrored in the pool. For a while, the travelers sat there once, and old blood had gone abroad. So yeah, you'll have action and adventure, and like great character moments, and then just all this blah, 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 just like I'm doing in this video. Another big issue that I had with Lord of the Rings is the treatment of Tolkien's female characters, all three of them. There's only three female characters in the whole Lord of the Rings, and there's none in The Hobbit. But in Lord of the Rings, there's only three, two of them are elves, and one is Eowyn. Other than Sam is my favorite character. Sam might be my favorite character in all of English literature. I am very comfortable saying that. Samwise, oh my god, is my precious little baby and I love him and I just want to carry him around with me and he's the best and I love hobbits in general but especially Sam. My god, I love Sam. But second to Sam is Eowyn, even though in the end her character is treated very strangely. So Eowyn is the most badass character in the whole of the Lord of the Rings. Not only the most badass female, but the most badass character. I said it. She's the best. So she's a Lady of Rohan and a shield maiden and she can ride and fight with the best of them. And when everybody goes off to war, they're all like, stay here. You have to stay here. And she's like, nah. Nah. She takes Mary, who they also told, you know, nah, 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 hobbits can't fight, stay here. She takes Mary and rides into battle dressed as a man. And she's like, come on, Mary, we're gonna go kick some ass and take some damn names. Which is great. Because one of the great themes in Lord of the Rings is that no one is above corruption. Everyone can be tempted by evil. No one is above that. But also, everyone, including hobbits and gasp, women can rise to heroism and be a damn hero and say damn day. I love that about Lord of the Rings. So Eowyn goes and does that and her and Mary ride into battle when everybody told them not to and they take down the freaking Nazgul, <laughs> which not only changes the tide of that whole battle, but pretty much the whole war. Disposing of the ring and stabbing the Nazgul are like the two things that happened in the war that pretty much changed the tides. I don't care about Aragorn and his ships and the army of the dead. I don't care about that. I'll focus it on Eowyn right now. Eowyn rides into battle dressed as a dude. The Nazgul's like, dude, you can't kill me. I can be killed by no man. And she goes, bitch, please. I ain't no man. And she takes off her helmet. And she's like, I'm a lady, bitch. And she stabs him in the face and he fucking dies. And it's amazing. And like, and I loved it. It's like my favorite part in the whole Lord of the Rings. My favorite part. So then she's healing up after the battle. And she like wakes up and she goes, okay, there's fighting still over there. I want to go fight. And like, no one's letting her. Because... They're like, you're still, your arm's broken, and stop. You can't fight with broken arms, stop. And she goes to Faramir, who's also healing up, and she's like, Faramir, we have to go fight. Come on, let's go fight it. And he's like, mm, no, we have to stay in the city for, like, plot reasons. 
But then he's like, hey, I'm in love with you now because you're so pretty and badass. And she's like, hmm, uh, I don't know about that. There's still fighting going on. But as soon as the fighting is over, she's like, oh, let me think about this for a minute. Yes, I do love you. I love you, Faramir. And I shall give up all my shield maiden ways. And no more shall I be a shield maiden and ride into battle. And, and it's just like, um, what? <laughs> You are the most badass character, full of badassery, and you're just gonna get married and, like, settle down. She's like, yeah, once the, the dead king's buried, like, yeah, it's cool, I'll marry you, and we'll just, you know, be whatever. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not against her marrying Faramir. I'm like, they're two, like, powerful people. Yeah, you should have a marriage and forge a relationship and whatever. That's cool, but, like... Why do you have to denounce your badassery in order to get married to Faramir? Like, why don't you be like, Faramir, let's get married and be the most badass power couple in all Middle Earth. And we should ride and we should, like, get treasure and be awesome and whatever. Like, what? like you could be married and still be a badass shield maiden, right? I want, I, that's, that's what I want. So in my head, in my mind, my head canon, that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm calling it happened. It's done. Eowyn is still a badass. Samwise is my favorite character of all of history and life and literature. She, he's, he's amazing. I love him. And those are my thoughts on Lord of the Rings. The end. So there you have it. All the books I read in December and the last books I read in the year of 2017. It's been a good year reading-wise, y'all. <laughs> Other shit's been booked. Uh, but reading wise, for me personally, it's been a great year. So we have that. And I'm going to film my 2017 wrap up uh, right after this. And I'm going to post them on the same day. So if you have not seen that yet, you can go over and watch that video. Like, comment, and subscribe if that is your jam. Uh, leave me a comment down below letting me know all the things that you read in December, if you care to do so. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.